I sold items across six different platforms. It was still not like an amazing week of sales, however, we're still definitely in the midst of just the suckiness that is July, but at least I did sell a few more things. It was definitely better than the prior weeks I've been talking about. And I'm like fully caught up, guys. It feels so good. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller on a bunch of different platforms like you're gonna hear about today. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you everything that sold for me within the week of July 17th, which was a Monday, all the way to Sunday, which was July 23rd. Like I shared earlier, I did sell items across six different platforms, and I think that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to reselling right now. A lot of people are struggling to resell because certain platforms just are not performing for them very well. You know, in my last What Sold video, I shared about how it really was kind of a struggle in the beginning half of July, and someone mentioned something about, you know, uh, kind of anecdotally across the board, a lot of people noticed that their impressions were way down on eBay. I honestly haven't gone in to check if that was the case for me, but it's the idea that if there is an issue with one platform, if you're also selling on other platforms, then hopefully they're there to pick up the slack a little bit. Um, we've seen that time and time again in the past, even with platforms like Poshmark, when they're twiddling with their search engine or when they're doing different things, honestly, just they go through weird phases and weird identity crisis situations um, and it's been really helpful to you know have things sell on eBay or have things sell on Mercari during those times so I think that this video is a really good example of why I think it's important to cross list let me know down in the comments below if you are a cross lister as well and what platforms you cross list on you're gonna hear about six of the platforms that I sell on and believe it or not that's not even all of the platforms that I list on and you guys know if you've been watching my channel you know the drill but I list to all these platforms extremely quickly because of a Chrome extension called List Perfectly. And in fact, um, if you want to see List Perfectly in action and see how I cross list as quickly and efficiently as I do, I have a video right here where I shared what it was like for me to go out and source five pairs of shoes, photograph them, list them, um, sell them, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in seeing what it's like to sell something from beginning to end, that's a really great video. And there's a portion of it where I show and talk about how to use List Perfectly. So if you're interested in List Perfectly, I do have a coupon code to help you save 30% off of your first month, and that coupon code is Becky Park. But let's go ahead and jump right into the video for today, which is about what sold. On Monday, which was July 17th, I started off with a really sad sale, and I was like, this is gonna be a rough week. So the first item was this Ranch in Town by Panhandle Slim, gray metallic button-up shirt in a men's size 16 and a half. It was like a 16 and a half neck size. This did have a hole in it. There was kind of an issue with it. And this I got for ever ago. Like I wanna say at least two years ago at this point from a local reseller who just didn't have time to resell anymore because of some personal issues going on in her family. And so I bought all of her inventory off of her and had about a dollar and two cents into each item. I've sold through 99% of the items that I bought off of her. Anything that's left are literally just the last remains of what exists of her inventory. Um, but this sold for $10 after like two years, it did have a whole, maybe it was like on the front, I don't remember, there was a flaw to it, which I think definitely was part of the reason as to why this took so long to sell and why it sold for so little. So I made a net profit of $6.03 on that. The next sale on Poshmark was this pair of Lucky Brand Miller 2 Cork Striped Wedge Cork Slip-On. Ooh, I used the word cork twice in the listing title. <laughs> Good job, Becky. Cork Slip-On Shoes in a size six. I do show myself hauling these in this video right here. I believe I was out of town with some students. Um, we were at like a festival. They had made an all-state choir. I can sit in on those rehearsals I have no desire to. So while they're in rehearsal, I go out and thrift. And I remember being at a particular Goodwill and seeing these in the shoe section and being like, I really shouldn't get these. Like, I feel like the best Lucky Brand shoes are either their boots or their flats. Those tend to do really well. Stuff like this usually sits for me forever, but for whatever reason, I just felt very inclined to get them. Um, I think they were half off as well, so I got them for $3 at that Goodwill. They actually sold for $22 after just a few months, and so my net profit on those was $14.60. Still not like a stellar pickup by any means. This is not me saying to you, run out of my own Lucky Brand wedges probably don't, but you know, they did okay for me. 
The next sale was this pair of Brooks Brothers Railroad Stripe Blue and White Straight Pants for men in a size 33 by 32. These I got at a local consignment store. They were having a birthday sale and I got these from that sale for $3.47. That was my average cost of goods once you factored in all of the items that I was able to stuff in a bag. Each bag was sold for $30 to me and then I just divided the amount that I paid that day for all the items by the number of items that I had purchased and I came out to $3.47. Those sold for $26 and so my net profit on those pants was $20.80. I do love selling Brooks Brothers. I don't find it that often and even with Brooks Brothers just because something is Brooks Brothers does not mean that it's going to sell well. It has to still be a desirable style, somewhat recent, but I thought this checked those boxes. I thought this was a really cool piece. Um, I could see men today wearing these to the office or to church or to date night or something like that. And so I picked them up. They only took maybe a month or two to sell and I made the $20 profit that I'm always hoping to make on items. Clearly I'm not always hitting the mark. I'm not always hitting $20 in profit, but I did this time. The next sale was over on eBay. This is something that I got at a pop-up consignment sale maybe like four years ago. Like I've had this for an inappropriate amount of time. It's this Aster the Label shoulder quilted long sleeve top in a size extra small. It's kind of like a pinkish color. I believe actually that there was no um, size tag and I had to just kind of go off of measurements. This sold via Offers to Watchers for $17.90. It's from so long ago that I don't even actually know how much I had into it. I'm gonna say $5 because I don't know, that seems like something I would have paid for this. And so we're saying that my net profit on this was $9.41. Now I'm not gonna lie to you. I get really confused about why people are excited about picking up Aster the Label. And that's because I have never had luck with it. Like. I tend to sit on it for at least a year or two. It does not sell quickly, so I don't get it. Like, I don't see it as a bolo. If you have good experiences with Aster, please share them down in the comments below, because I'd like to hear them. I just don't have any firsthand, like, waha, Aster the label experiences to speak of, so I don't understand why people get excited about finding this brand. And then on Depop, I sold this pair of footprints, which is kind of like um, a sub-brand of Birkenstocks. It was this pair of brown leather fisherman sandals or like clogs in a European size 37. These sold for $40 and that was with me paying for shipping because on Depop, I just pay shipping on everything. Um, I only had $3.47 into those from the same birthday sale at that local consignment store. And I made a net profit of $22.33. So at first I was nervous that this wasn't gonna be worth very much just because it is kind of a sub brand of Birkenstocks. Sometimes you have those sub brands and they really don't do as well as like the main brand. Um, but when I looked up comps, these look like they still did kind of okay. And that fisherman look of like many straps and it's closed at the top. I have had really good luck with these kinds of sandals, um, more so last summer. I feel like I haven't found as many this summer, but I'm happy to report that those sold really fast for pretty decent money and I made more than $20 of profit on it. On Tuesday, which was July 18th, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Levi's White 711 Skinny Distressed Raw Hem Mid-Rise Jeans in a women's size 30. Those sold for $29 with discounted shipping. That was an offer that Poshmark VA sent out on my behalf so I didn't have to sit there and like, who, who liked an item? Oh, let me send them an offer. I just have it set up where they're gonna do that for me five minutes after someone likes an item. I got that a while ago at a local consignment store, the same one that I keep talking about with the birthday sale. Um, I had a dollar and 50 cents into it, so I made a net profit of $19.68. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this Talbot's black and white split neck, three fourth sleeve shirt in a size extra small. This is also something that I've had forever. I believe I had about $2 into this. I didn't write it down on my little handed down to paper in front of me. So that cost of goods will be off a little bit when I talk about my total cost of goods, but that sold for $11. I, I don't even remember where I got this. I'm just assuming I had $2 into it because I'm hoping that that's something that I got at like the bins three or four years ago. I don't know, but I made a net profit of $6 and five cents and it only took like three years. So the next thing to sell was over on eBay and it was this new with tags Luxel. I don't know how to say the name of this brand. It's very clearly kind of like a junior's brand. Reminds me a lot of like Charlotte Russe. 
Forever 21, those kinds of, yeah, juniors kind of going out party brands. It was this ivory cropped halter top in a junior size large. I put words like party or going out in the listing title because I think that's what you would do in a top like this. I got this for free from my uh, sister-in-law who got it from her cousin. So her cousin just gave her like a bag full of stuff and my sister-in-law went through and picked out stuff that she would wear. But a lot of it was this kind of going out like, you know, mini skirts, like party dresses, that sort of thing. Um, and so my friend G1, who also resells, we just kind of looked through the bag together or maybe she looked at it first and picked out the items that she would resell and then she gave me the rest of the items. I don't remember. So we didn't have anything into any of these items and there were some good items in this bag. Rag and Bone and Adriana Goldschmidt. Like there were some really good pieces. This was not one of them. So I don't really know why I took it upon myself to list it, but I did. Maybe just because it was new with tags. It sold for $10 that was promoted at 3% and so I made a net profit of six dollars and 86 cents on wednesday which was july 19th i sold nothing which you know that's what happens sometimes but on thursday which was july 20th on poshmark i sold this white house black market red mock neck sleeveless dress and it had a slit and it was in a size two that sold for 25 dollars with this kind of shipping again because of posher va i had two dollars and 52 cents into that from the local consignment store's birthday sale and so i made a net profit of 15 dollars and 46 cents i do feel like the number of people who are infatuated with White House Black Market has gone down, but those people are still willing to pay decent money for White House Black Market pieces. Um, I generally will sell, especially their dresses, like career dresses, between $25 and $35. So this was right around where I was expecting it to sell. Um, and I made a net profit of $15.46. I definitely would not pay over like four or five dollars for a piece from White House Black Market just because it does tend to sit for some time and like I said it's probably only going to sell for 25 to 35 so you just have to ask yourself is it worth it but for me to pick it up for two dollars and 52 cents I was like yes it is it's worth it. The next sale on Poshmark was this pair of Dansko leopard print Olivia Claw calf hair slip-on shoes in a European size 40. This is another brand that I think there is a market for this brand I think that market has gotten smaller, especially with the emergence in popularity amongst other comfort shoe brands. But, you know, some people are still very loyal to Dansko. I've just noticed over the years that it tends to sit a little bit longer for me now and I'm not selling it for as much as I used to. These sold for $29 with discounted shipping, again, because of Pasha VA. Um, I had $3.47 into them from the same birthday sale, from the same consignment store. So I made a net profit of $17.71 on those. On eBay, I sold this Vineyard Vines black off-the-shoulder sweetheart neckline mini dress in a size 6. This one sold for my full asking price of $34.99, and that was within maybe like a month of me listing it. It was from the same consignment store. I only had $2.99 into it, and so my net profit was $27.43. You guys hear me talk a lot about items that I've sourced from local consignment stores, and really I'm just talking about two. There are two consignment stores that I hit up pretty frequently, one of those consignment stores has two different locations. So I guess if you wanna talk about actual physical buildings, there are three buildings that I visit that are consignment stores. Um, and I go to them often because they have great stuff. People have already sorted through the items to make sure that they're in sellable condition. And they tend to pay attention to a lot of the same things that resellers would, things like recency, things like style, all of those kinds of things. And because my local consignment stores run really great sales, I do believe once the items have been in their store for a certain amount of time, at that point, they just get donated to local thrift stores. And that's why, you know, they have like a little markdown process where once an item has been in the store for this many months, it goes down to 25% off and then 50% off and then 75 and then sometimes they run like a $3 tag sale or a dollar tag sale and those are the times that I try to hit up these consignment stores. I've also heard from some of you in the comments that you don't have consignment stores like these in your area and so I get it like it's kind of hard to listen to me talk about sourcing at a place like a consignment store as often as I do because you're like oh I don't have something like that. Um, I feel the same way when I watch people talk about you know pieces that they pick up at the bins I have a bins about two hours away. It's very unrealistic for me to get there though, you know, with kids and um, just with the busyness of life that I have. You know, I also have a full-time job or, you know, some uh, resellers on YouTube will talk about how their Goodwills do like 99 cent days. I think that every 
area will have something you just have to really dig and research and figure out what opportunities your local area has. Or maybe, you know, like some resellers, you are going to have to drive out like 30 minutes or an hour or even two hours. Again, that's not something that I personally can do, but that is something that a lot of resellers do as well, is they will go on pretty long commutes to find inventory where, you know, it's either very well priced or the inventory is just great. So yes, you will hear me talk about these consignment stores often and that's because I'm extremely blessed and lucky to have consignment stores in the area that will run these kinds of sales. Plato's Closet does it too. Um, I just don't go to Plato's as much. It's like 15 minutes away, which is farther away than these two consignment stores. So that seems kind of far to me. Like I just don't get out there as often. All right, that was a tangent that no one asked for, but next from the same consignment store was this Nike Golf Dry Fit green short sleeve polo shirt in a size extra large. To be honest, I don't know why I picked this up. Like I didn't need to get this, but I had $3.47 into it. It came from that same birthday sale that I keep talking about. Um, it sold for $11 and that was promoted at 3%. My profit on that was $5.62. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking when I picked this up, like why I thought this would be a good pickup. Like Nike golf stuff does do pretty well, but their polo shirts are just naturally not gonna sell for as much. I think their pants are usually a pretty good pickup if you can get them for under $5. Polo shirts, I don't know. On Friday, which was July 21st, on Poshmark, I sold this vintage London Fog clay cloth parliament plush line trench main coat in a men's size 44. This is old school. This is like, I don't even know when people were wearing this kind of stuff, but it came with this extremely intense and thick and soft, like, plushy lining that you could zip out, I believe. That was uh, the Parliament plush, that's what it was called. I don't know. It's like I looked up comps for this and the comps are all over the place, but also there's so many pieces like this on reselling markets. And that's because you go to any you know, thrift store and you're going to find a ton of these kind of vintage London Fog style trench coats and stuff. It's just not really the style. I feel like maybe a lot of like theater departments have these on hand in their costume departments because when they're doing period pieces like period plays or musicals, they need stuff like this. But you don't really see a lot of current men wearing these kinds of trench coats. So I think I had it listed kind of high at like 50 or something like that, but it ended up selling at 20 on Poshmark. I got an offer for 20 and I was like, Okay, you can just have it. I only had $2 into it from a reseller who sold me all of her inventory after about a year of reselling and she learned that she just didn't really enjoy selling clothes. So I agreed to buy all of her clothes off of her. So again, about $2 into each item. So I made a net profit of $14 on that. But generally speaking, I would say these kinds of jackets are just not worth your time when it comes to listing them because they are really hard to photograph. There's just a lot of pieces to them. I don't know, I did not enjoy any part of the process with this jacket. The next thing to sell was this Calvin Klein pink and white striped button up shirt in a men's neck size 19. And it said like the word big on it, 34, 35, I don't know. You know, just like women have a lot of things in regards to sizing. There's like petite, there's tall, there's, you know, all these different things. Men have them too. Um, but this sold for $15 on Poshmark. I had $3.92 into it. That was from a different reseller who sold me about a half pallet of clothing because she just had too much inventory. So I made a net profit of $8.08. .08. I just, ugh, if you watch my channel, you know that I do not enjoy selling men's button up or button down shirts. I, again, kind of similar to the trench coat that I just talked about, I feel like they're a pain to photograph because first of all, they get so easily wrinkled. And then secondly, there's a bajillion buttons that you need a button to make it look good before you put it on the hanger and before you take pictures. There's buttons here, there's buttons here, there's buttons here. There's just so many buttons. Um, and then I feel like the ROI on them is never as good as I want them to be. If I were finding really nice brands, that'd be another story, but I, I'm not. I'm selling Calvin Klein button-up shirts, a lot of J. Crew factory, it's that sort of thing. So nothing for me to be super excited about. The next thing to sell was over on eBay and it was this pair of Nike black nylon shorts with an elastic waist in a size medium. These I got from the reseller who didn't like to sell clothes. So I bought her inventory off of her and I had about $2 into these. I listed them pretty low because that's what comps were showing. I may have listed them too low because they literally sold overnight. So I listed them for 19 dollars 
went to bed, woke up, and they had sold. I don't know if there's anything special about these, but I was happy with the quick flip, and I made $14.83. On Mercari, I sold this pair of Travelers by Chico's, which is a line that they have of pieces that are made primarily of acetate, and so the idea is they're just not gonna wrinkle very easily. The idea is they're great pieces to travel in, because even if you're on a plane for a long time, or on a bus, or train, or something, um, you know, the pieces are not gonna get wrinkled, they're gonna be very comfortable, but you're also going to look put together. People used to swear by them and say that they sold for a ton. I sit on them for a very long time now, so I honestly don't even pick them up very much anymore. But these were these sapphire blue pull-on pants in a Chico size 3, which is a US size 16. That's part of the reason I picked them up is because they were a bigger size. Um, I picked them up at you know, my local consignment store for $3 during a $3 tag sale. Um, they sold for $22 on Mercari and I made a net profit of $15.45. On my website, I sold just the most gorgeous dress. Like it was so beautiful. It was new with tags by the brand C and B Scene. I've never heard of this, to be quite honest with you. It might just be like a boutique brand or something, but it was this beautiful gold velvet Grecian draped maxi dress in a size large. I got this at my local Plato's closet and I only had $3 into it. I saw it and I just like stopped. Like my jaw about hit the floor. It's one of those dresses where, it, yeah, it's like this velvety fabric and the color kind of shifts as the dress moves. Like the dress really has a life of its own. It was beautiful. And I was pretty proud of the pictures that I took of it because I feel like I somewhat, to the best of my ability, captured how beautiful this dress is. This was something that was in my April drop. That was the last drop that I did before the July drop that I just had on my website. And I just thought it was stunning. So I was so happy when a viewer named Shalina, and I'm so sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly, but I hope I am. She purchased the dress for me and she actually emailed once she got it. And she was like, oh my gosh, this dress is so pretty. And I was like, I'm so happy it's yours now. Like I just, needed to make sure that it had a good home. And I hope that she wears this thing to work, to bed while she's cooking. Like, it's so insanely beautiful. I hope, Shalina, that you get to wear it a ton and that you get a bajillion compliments when you're in it because it's so pretty. So she bought that for $29.95. Again, I had $3 into it from a local Plato's closet. And so my net profit on that, because I do pay for shipping, was $17.11. Shalina, thank you so much. And again, I hope you love it. Speaking of my website, I did just release my July drop. It was over 50 pieces of just like amazing items. There were Rothy's, activewear pieces by Halara, some Nike, some like, I don't know. Actually, this rack is stuff from the drop that hasn't sold. I'm looking at like a Brahmin bag. I'm looking at some cabby pieces, some dress form, lots of really cool pieces. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. But I'm always so happy and thankful when anyone purchases something from the website. It really was kind of a labor of love to put it together. And I'm just so thankful anytime anyone even visits it and just checks it out. It means a lot to me. Um, on Saturday, which was July 22nd, on eBay, I sold another Chico's piece. This one was new with tags and it was this blue Riley boat neck three fourth sleeve shirt in a Chico size zero, which is like a US small. This one sold for $20 and it was promoted at 3% on eBay. I had $3.99 into it from a local thrift store. And so my net profit on that was $11 and 75 cents. Generally speaking, I don't pick up just like plain tops from Chico's. I don't find that there's a lot of value in them. I think I went for this one because it was new with tags and because it wasn't priced super high, but I knew I wasn't gonna get anywhere near like a $20 profit on that. And so I really should have just left it behind, but yeah. The next sale. <laughs> I was very happy to see it go because it's a very old item. Um, it's by the brand White Plum. I bet this is like a Ross or a TJ Maxx brand or something, but it was this brown long sleeve elastic waist dress in a size large. This I got at a local consignment store during COVID when everyone was on lockdown, businesses were not able to open their doors, and I worked out a deal with them to shop within their storage unit by myself so that everyone would be safe. And I was able to just stuff 
items into big black garbage bags and I paid $50 per bag. So my cost of goods per clothing item was 80 cents, which was amazing. Again, that was like over two years ago at this point. So most of those pieces have sold, thank the good Lord, but there are a few that are still lingering and this was one of them. It finally sold for $9.99 and so I made a net profit of $6.04. On Mercari, I sold this Talbot's white 100% Irish linen button-up collared shirt in a size four. I love selling Talbots and I was excited at first when I saw this because I was like, oh, it's linen, it's white, it's just such a classic piece. This should sell for at least 20 to $25. Um, and this is something that I got from uh, the reseller who realized that she doesn't like to sell clothes. However, upon closer inspection, when I was photographing the item, I realized that the inner care tag, I think, I think this is what the issue was, but I think it was like stuck to the garment. It was maybe like too much heat was there. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it, basically the tag was stuck to the garment and then the tag was like orange or something and it kind of like would show through the linen fabric. I don't, I don't even remember. I'm like pulling this out of my brain catalog. I don't know, my memory is fading fast. Like I'm gonna tell you, I already know that I'm in trouble for the future when it comes to retaining memories and stuff. All that to say, there was an issue with this top um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was an issue. So I listed it kind of low to begin with. I believe I got a $12 offer and I accepted it because I was like, I just need this to go because it's flawed. Again, $2 into it, my net profit was $7.81. Thankfully, that didn't stick around for too long. I had it listed for maybe a few months and then it sold, but just not a great sale overall. And then finally on Sunday, which was July 23rd, on Poshmark, I sold this new with tags Halara black mid-rise side pocket lined athletic skirt in a size small. That sold for $22. I'm saying that I had no cost of goods into it. And so I made a net profit of $17.60. The reason I'm saying I had no cost of goods into it is because a wholesale company called Bazaar reached out to me a while ago about collaborating with them on a video. I will have that video coming up shortly, probably next week. And they did give me some credit to, you know, get some pieces and just kind of experience the app and what they have to offer and just to try selling those items. That video is coming out soon. I will reserve any thoughts that I have about Bazaar for that video. You will hear a lot of my thoughts. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, so no cost of goods into it because they gave me credit to play with. I made $17.60. The next thing to sell was by Old Navy and it was this black and white polka dot cami spaghetti strap jumpsuit in a size 14? Nope, medium. <laughs> I cannot read my own handwriting, even though I purposefully took the time to like write as neatly as possible because I have come to the realization that my handwriting is disgusting. It's embarrassing. And I have the ability to write nicely. It's just that I'm so lazy and I just, you know, want to hurry up and finish writing whatever it is that I'm writing. But there's something so beautiful about the written word. And so I wanted to like be more purposeful and mindful about taking my time with how I wrote and it still didn't make a difference. Like I still didn't know what that was, but that sold for $15. That's something that I got for free from a different wholesale company, America's Thrift Supply. They had sent me a micro bale of dresses for me to do an unboxing of for you guys. And so no money into it. I made $12. On eBay, I sold this Beyond Yoga, which is a pretty good activewear line. Obviously, it's not as popular as like Lululemon or even Zia, Zaya. I will never know how to say it, but it's like pretty well known amongst yoga enthusiasts and other people. But this was a black polka dot bodysuit and it was called the Step Out Bodysuit in a size medium. I found this at a local Goodwill and to be honest with you, when I found it, I found comps for it while I was inside the Goodwill and comps were great. Like this piece was consistently selling over $50. I think I had it listed kind of high. I think I had it listed around like 65 or maybe even 75. I got a lot of like, $25, $30 offers. And obviously I kept countering those and nothing ever came of them. Someone finally offered me $45 on eBay. And even though it's a little bit lower than comps, at this point I've had this now for like, 
I don't know, I want to say like five to six months. And so I was like, I think I just need to go ahead and move it. And it was a good price, especially because I only had $6.99 into it from that local Goodwill. So I still made a net profit of $32.16, which I think is really good. That was my second best sale of the week. My best sale of the week is the last sale that we'll talk about. And it was on, of all platforms, Facebook Marketplace. I definitely missed like the gold rush era of Facebook Marketplace. I feel like when Facebook Marketplace first opened and the people who got on there at the very beginning, I feel like they just did so well. Like people were just selling so many things and things were flying out the door. Like it was, it sounded like an amazing time. I missed that. I definitely came in maybe like six months after that had died down, like people were still making sales, but it was nothing like when sellers were first selling on Facebook Marketplace. And now I feel like it's basically a graveyard. I don't really hear a lot about people making very many sales on Facebook Marketplace. Let me know if you are an avid Facebook Marketplace seller and you sell a ton of stuff over there. Let me know if if you do, because I wanna know if that still exists. I just feel like I don't hear about people like that very much anymore. So I was very happy and so surprised when this sale came in, but it was this pair of Fly London Yond Leather Antique Silver Loafer Wedges. They were like slip-on shoes in a women's size eight. Those sold for $65 on Facebook Marketplace. That was my full asking price. And furthermore, I had the buyer pay for shipping. Um, I got those for $8 at a local consignment store. So my net profit on those was $52.92. Fly London is a great brand. I don't find it very often. It's definitely more of, I would say, a mature brand. Um, yeah, it's something that the very few times that I find it, I pick it up all the time because it does usually do pretty well. But yeah, I was ecstatic that those did as well as they did and that they sold on Facebook Marketplace of all places. And because it's pretty easy to cross list a Facebook Marketplace, even though, like I said, it's basically a graveyard over there and I sell one thing every like three months, I just go ahead and put all of my listings over there anyway because it doesn't take me a lot of time and because I might get a sale like this every once in a while. I also do get local sales every once in a while where someone will see something and we'll meet up and you know we'll exchange the item for the money. I don't like to do that as much just because one, I just don't wanna see people, but two, it eats up a chunk of your day to have to go out and meet someone, I don't know. So I do prefer obviously the kind of Facebook Marketplace sales where they buy something and I ship it to them. I just don't get them very often. Those were my sales for the week. So let's talk about my numbers. On Poshmark, I definitely sold the most items. I sold 11 items for a gross sales amount of $224. Once you factor in Poshmark's fees and all of the discounted shipping that I offered via Posh or VA, that total drops to $171.44. I had $20.90 into those 11 items as my cost of goods, and so my net profit for the week on Poshmark was $150.54. On eBay, I sold eight items for a gross sales amount of $168.87. When you factor in eBay fees and maybe any shipping discrepancies, that total drops to $139.34. I had $25.24 into those eight items, and so I made a net profit of $114.10. I had one Depop sale for a gross sales amount of $40. Once you factor in shipping and Depop's fees, that total drops to $25.80. I had only $3.40. 47 cents into that item. It was that pair of footprints Birkenstock sandals. And so my net profit on Depop was $22.33. I had two Mercari sales for $34 in gross sales. Once you factor in fees, that total drops to $28.26. I had $5 into those two items, and so my net profit on Mercari was $23.26. I had one Shopify sale, and that was for a gross sales amount of $29.95. Once you factor in me paying for shipping. Shalina actually paid with PayPal, so I was responsible for the PayPal fees. Um, and so once you factor all that, the total dropped to $20.11. I had $3 into the item, so $17.11 was my net profit. I had one Facebook Marketplace sale for $65 in gross sales. Once you factor in Facebook Marketplace's fees, that total drops to $60.92. I had $8 into the item, and so my net profit was $52.92. 
So in total, I sold 24 items for a gross sales amount of $561.82. When you factor in fees and shipping, that total drops to $446.47. My cost of goods was $65.61. And so my net profit for the week was $380.86. You know, that's, that's not a lot. It's less than half of what my goal is for the week. But the week before that, I had made $160. The week before that, I had made $300. I mean, the number is going up. I hope it continues to go up in August and September, you know, as we enter the fall. It's always difficult though, because when, you know, the school year begins, I get insanely busy because I am a high school choir teacher. So not only am I in school, but my kids are in school and they both are on team for gymnastics. They do piano lessons. They do all these things. And I spend my whole life just driving them around places. If you are a parent, you probably understand, but it is a lot of getting them from point A to point B. So I don't know, it's going to be really busy, but it's also just like a really fun and exciting period of our lives. The kids are just thriving, I feel like, and they're just doing all these really cool and exciting things that they really love and enjoy. And I don't know, it, it feels, everything feels right. I feel really good about where things are at and um, where our family is at. And my hope is that you feel the same way. My hope is that you feel like you are exactly where you're supposed to be at this moment and that you are thriving wherever you are. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button on your way out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.